Hello, everyone. I'm Kimberly Guilfoyle, along with Kirsten Powers, Brian Kilmeade, Jillian Turner, and Catherine Timp. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Are Bill Clinton's marital indiscretions fair game in the race for the White House? Well, Donald Trump thinks so, and he's fighting back against Hillary's recent accusations of sexism with a reminder of her own husband's record with women. I think he is fair game because his presidency was really considered to be very troubled, to put it mildly, because of all of the things that she's talking to me about. I mean, she's mentioning sexism. I turned her exact words against her from that standpoint. And she's got to be careful. You know, it's got to be fair. And we all have to fight fairly. She's playing the woman's card. And it's like, give me a break. His opponent, Carly Fiorina, agrees. Of course, Bill Clinton's fair game. He's a former president. And as I recall, Donald Trump threw George W. Bush under the bus way back in September. But you're not going to beat Hillary Clinton by attacking Bill Clinton. You're going to beat Hillary Clinton. I'm going to beat Hillary Clinton by attacking her track record and her lack of trustworthiness. But the head of the Democratic Party has a warning for anyone who dares bring up Bill's past. I think that Donald Trump uh, or any candidate on the other side of the aisle would raise Bill Clinton as, uh, as somehow a negative to their peril. I think every poll I've ever seen shows that if President Clinton were a candidate tomorrow, he'd be reelected. Okay, maybe one day her, her reign will end. But okay, so Kirsten, what do you make of it? Fair game? Is this a wise move or touching the well, third rail? I, do, I don't think it's a wise move, precisely for what Debbie Wasserman Schultz just said. He's very popular. And like Republicans kind of went, they didn't go after him as much as maybe Trump's going to go mm -hmm. after them. But they, with the impeachment hearings, they saw this really backfire on them, going after him over, you know, over his womanizing. It didn't stop him when he was running for president. I don't think it's something that's going to stop him from, you know, it never stopped him from becoming president. Why is it going to stop her from becoming yeah, president? Yeah, Brian, you've got the clipboard. Well, how would you call the place? <laughs> <laughs> First off, you were there. So you know him better than most people in this building, and we're an extended part of the building. Well, I know you, him pretty well, saw, too, but well, that's, that's good. To, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> uh, that is true from, uh, from your previous life. Yeah. But I, I will say this. I think that he effectively will take away the female card from, um, and I guess we vehemently disagree here, Kirsten, because I think no, he's taking never. it. But I think he's taking it away effectively from Hillary Clinton, and here's why: when Bill Clinton is popular now, but when he left, Al Gore's assessment was. This guy is so unpopular and controversial, I can't even use him. If he, can be, if he could channel and bring Bill Clinton back to 1998 and make us remember that and then bring up all the episodes and all the lawsuits that followed and all the accusations that were there, then I think Donald Trump has done something not only for himself but for the entire Republican field. But the thing is, a lot of people think, I th and I think this as well, and, I, and Al Gore may even think it today, that that was a mistake. Right, that he actually, it wasn't just that he felt that he was problematic because of what had happened. It was also that Al Gore had a lot of animosity towards him because of what happened. And I think that got in the way of him using Bill Clinton to campaign for him. And it probably, things potentially could have gone differently if he would have used Bill Clinton to campaign for Absolutely. Him. But the fact that it was even a thought in his mind, as opposed to the popular ex president like Ronald Reagan was when he left, sure. as opposed I mean, to the man who has a 70% approval rating now, he was at 44, 45% then, and he brought with him a lot of baggage, a bad marriage. Or a marriage that didn't seem to be effective or loyalty wasn't a factor. Now he's going to bring all this stuff up. He's going to start bringing up names like, I guarantee you, in South Carolina this week, here comes Paula Jones, here comes all the old names out, and people are going to go, wow, do we really want this chaos again? The circus is back in town. Do we want that? It's not going to think about the economy and the stock market. Then they're going to reevaluate what exactly was going on in the economy during that time and that there was, an, there was a tech boom and the NASDAQ surge and the creation of the Internet. Thanks, Al Gore. We owe you one. So I think that people are going to reevaluate that, and then we're going to be talking about something that should have been a big check mark in her side. Don't forget, wasn't there Jennifer Flowers to the one with I the no excuses jeans? Yeah. All the trailer trash. Oh my God. Yeah, it's horrible. Well, you were saying it didn't stop Bill from getting elected. Why would it stop Hillary? Times have really changed since then. Feminist movements talking a lot about rape culture and about believing victims who say that they're victims of sexual assault. And Hillary actually attacked and shamed these women, actually ruined their lives. And then she's saying, I'm a feminist, and this is repeated, like you said, Jennifer Flowers, too. It's repeated pattern of behavior all associated with her being Bill's wife. But she's not, Hillary Clinton is not complicit in her husband's affair with somebody else. No matter what she says about it, no matter who she talks to about it, 
Mm -hmm. That's but not her she dick. Was, she actually had the guts to say, well, accuse people who accuse others right, of well, sexual assault have a right I mean, to be believed. I, I think we can she did the exact opposite. You can't call yourself a feminist but, I mean, with a record well, like that's that. Well, that's a fair point in the sense, and I'm not even sure she knows what she walked into, which yeah. is right now, and you know very well because you, you do such a great job covering all of this, um, it, that the fact is that it's now sort of feminist dogma that once a woman says she's been raped, she's been raped and you're never allowed to question it. Now, of course, there are people who have accused Bill Clinton of rape. They've never been found guilty. Um, but Hillary came out and said, Right. We have to believe well, once the accusation is also made, the discussion of power to dynamics. Believe it. Too. Right, and so, so I that's, think a lot of people that's a that dicey area. Would be on Monica Lewinsky's side. Actually, yeah. she'd have mm -hmm. way more support. Yeah. It wouldn't have been the way that it was. Right. Then. Let's get Jillian back in and finish. you know I think we can debate Bill Clinton's presidency and his affair or affairs until the cows come home. But at the end of the day, the American people are not voting him into or out of office. They're voting for his wife. People right. are going to judge her based on her agenda, based on her background, and based on her policy. But, but Jill, would, would, you also, would you also say this, Jerry? Would you also say this is correct? Would you also say that to some people that want to vote for somebody just because they're the first African American president, they're the first female president, and is, is it effective or not for Donald Trump to this point to nullify that and take that away, take away the female card, the sexist thing that worked so effective mm -hmm. against Mitt Romney? He was unable to, much to the chagrin of Donald Trump, who actually, when he was supporting Mitt Romney, said. Why isn't this guy fighting back? Right. Now, all of a sudden, you have somebody who neutralized Jeb Bush, at least temporarily, by saying he's low energy. He destroyed uh, Governor Walker by saying his, his, uh, his uh, state is a bit of a mess. That Cruz is a maniac. With what Rubio is a kid, in one word, he has managed to take the worst part or the, the opposition research on a candidate and bring it forward and stick it in everybody's head. Yeah. yeah. But I was going to say, but he hasn't stopped Cruz possible. and he hasn't stopped Rubio. I mean, I think some of the people he stopped are people who were going to be stopped regardless. That, I mean, they were not, Scott Walker was not going to win the nomination. But for a while, most people thought <laughs> no, he was well, there. No, well, I mean, I never thought that. I mean, it's not, I don't, I don't, I, I think that the people that he's taking credit for taking out, let's see him take out somebody who's like an actual. Bottom commander. line is we know a couple things, well, we know a few things about Bill. <laughs> uh, number one, he was a very popular president. Okay, he's yeah. a great campaigner. I know right. I called on him. He helped us campaign in San Francisco very effectively. You know, he's definitely good on the stump. She, she would be foolish not to use him. She runs the risk of people that are counterpunchers like Donald Trump pushing it in her face for sure. But she's made this announcement. Let's roll this bit of sound and we'll get uh, some feedback from the table here, shall we? Of Hillary talking about Bubba. Starting in January, I will have my not so secret weapon. <laughs> cover as much ground in New Hampshire as we possibly can, see as many people, thank everybody who's going to turn out and vote for me and try to get some more to join them. Okay, she's going to use them. I mean, she has right. to. Why wouldn't you? She, well, I think there's a problem. The one thing, if Bill Clinton thinks that he's got to go up there and answer questions, and the first five questions are going to be about Paula Jones and all these other women and the issues, he's going to be like, honey, I think i gotta, I got to go fishing with some stranger. I don't really want to go do this. So in, and if, if Donald Trump spends all th uh, Wednesday and Thursday talking about this, guess what? When Bill Clinton goes out and has his first, uh, as his first cattle call, when he starts taking random questions from the press or does an event and he has to start answering these things. He's going to really say, I don't think, need this. Do you really think reporters are going to do that? I mean, I just oh, don't, I don't see them. going to cover what Trump I mean, said. I, can, Trump I, can see a, I can see a questioner, or, but I don't see it being like a, a, like a full on constant like asking him, rehashing things that have already Don't been these people have battle hashed. I mean, I mean, it's not really, have, we haven't discussed this enough. Every time he brings up a topic, uh, Kirsten, it becomes the, and to ask any Republican, it becomes the agenda. Every time he brings it up. Well, he drives Muslims, the message. For example, yeah. the Muslims comment, for the John McCain comment, to the Cauley Fiorina face comment. Every time he says something, everybody else is forced to respond. But don't you think Bill Clinton can just sort of dispatch with that, like have an answer and then move on? I don't think I don't, he still has and an and answer. I don't think he's been answered yet. Feminine. Yeah, women. And this really kind of makes it not so easy for her to do that. But did you see the Rasmussen poll now? Head to head, Trump and Hillary are now a virtual tie, okay? Just one poll, but they're in a virtual tie now, and she has absolutely no competition. She is currently possibly going to lose Iowa, New Hampshire with a, against a 74-year-old socialist. There has to be a degree of recalibration in Brooklyn at the headquarters of Hillary Clinton camp. Right you now. think she's in big trouble? 
I would say she is not running on running on uh, cruise control like she should be right now, like almost an incumbent would be, sitting back, watching the 12 battle each other out. But you don't mean she's not going to win the primary. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm just saying right now in the caucus, it's not a layup. I'm saying in New Hampshire, it's not a layup. So if you have to wait to the third event to get a victory in something that you should be winning overwhelmingly, there has to be a sense of, man, we're not doing good in the preseason. I'm worried about the regular season. Mm -hmm. I know. But you know what? I still think that they're going to make a good team together. They're going to be vulnerable for sure, Jillian. But, I mean, he's going to go out there. I don't think she's calling him in now out of desperation. I think she held it because she doesn't want to wear it out, the little special, the secret weapon. But he's going to be out there for her. He loves to do this, and he's kind of good at charming his way out of things. You know, we had what? He got impeached, but then they said, oh. It happens. Okay. <laughs> it happens, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Wish I could do it. I mean, yeah. Catherine made me think of a really good point, which is, you know, it's not just Hillary Clinton running for president. She's very much relying on the platform of being a woman, emphasizing her gender, which I agree with. I think that's a good tactic, and I applaud her for mm -hmm. doing it. But she's also running as a feminist. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that her and her top aide, who also happens to be a woman, Huma Abedin, have both endured these very public, very shaming affairs mm -hmm. by their husbands. And it's not my job to stand here and tell them what they should decide in the aftermath. But mm -hmm. these are two women who are both very pro-feminist and have stood by as their husband cheated on them very she did publicly. More than stand it's, by. You know, it's, it's, that's an interesting dynamic. Well, to be fair, I don't, I don't know what, that what Uma did is not feminist. I mean, she stayed with her husband. That's not not feminist, right? But I mean, it's, to, to, but, it's just but Uma hasn't attacked anybody. By the way, it's is not... this outnumbered? What's going on here? I have no guy help at all. Charlie's Angels. Yeah, what's happening? I'm not complaining, but I'm just pointing out. I, mean, I need a couch. You should have noticed gender. I, I should, you're right. I should be. Ooh, everyone's right? the same sex so all of a sudden. Where's HR? We're all purple penguins. <laughs> oh, they're listening, yes. Kirsten. Believe me. They know, and they know of my voicemail. Oh, anyway. my goodness. And this is the five. I know. In case anyone's confused. Coming up on the five, football star Peyton Manning is fighting back against allegations. He's used performance-enhancing drugs by Al Jazeera. You're going to hear from Peyton along with Tom Brady and others coming to his defense next.